What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're doing Valley. Valley is a boot to root machine from Try Hack Me and uh, not Hack the Box. I was about to say Hack the Box. It's not Hack the Box, it's Try Hack Me. Um, so basically we have to do, we have to bring, we have to trip the flags, the user flag and the root flag. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing I did as always, we start with the in-map scan information gathering phase. As you can see, I used dash a switch to perform a comprehensive scan on this IP address. And as you can see, in the output, we have two open ports, 22 and 80. So the first thing that we have to do is to navigate to port 80 since we don't have any active or valid credentials to log into the SSH server. So basically, we go to the web server or the web page and that's the web page as you can see it's a website to display galleries and the pricing or to sell photos and each photo is priced differently so you are able to view the photo gallery by clicking on the view gallery button and you can view the prices by clicking on the view pricing button so if you start with the view gallery functionality you can see the different pictures with a description for every single picture if you closely monitor the URL, as you can see, it starts with slash gallery slash gallery HTML. If we explore these photos by navigating to the photos one by one, it's going to take time. But let's take a sample photo and it opens a new tab displaying the photo. And as you can see, this is the URL formula changed. So slash static slash one. So these numbers or this formula of the URL is not something new it's familiar to see during web application permission testing uh, so basically we have numbers if we try with zero for example as you can see we get directed to zero zero now i didn't intentionally try with zero it's just a guess and we get this note but i'm going to tell you how to arrive to this uh, page or this note systematically let's go back maybe you could try with two and you get a different photo so for every photo that is I'm gonna call it an ID represented by a number okay that is attached or corresponding to every photo so if you click on this photo for example we can see the ID is five all right so here it comes when we enumerate the web application so basically here now we have photos with every photo it has its own id as a number what if if we try to fuzz this part of the url the part represented by the number so this way we can enumerate all of the possibilities okay on the web server at the same time we gather we gather as much information as possible about the photos and about the urls so for that reason, as you can see here, so at first I started with a simple directory enumeration scan with GoBuster. This is the URL and this is the word list I used, directory list medium. It's revealed three directories, gallery, static and pricing. Now all of these URLs uh, have been explored easily, basically by simple navigation as you saw, but if we enumerate further that's what we want to do we want to enumerate this part of the URL after the static represented by the number because as we saw earlier every photo is represented by a number in the URL so slash static slash number so we want to fuzz all of the possibilities all of the numbers okay now before doing that we need a word list okay so to create the word list, basically, we need numbers. If you go back here, as you can see, these are numbers. Now, by chance, when I typed zero here, so if you type zero again, you will get redirected to zero, zero, which means there are other possibilities than single numbers. From single numbers from zero to 99, or from zero to nine, we also have from zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, one, 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 four, all the way till 99 so we also have to take this into consideration when we generate the word list of numbers 
So to do that, we will use sequence. So here we go. Uh, so basically, in my password cracking uh, node file, here we see how to generate word lists. As you can see, this is a generic word list tied to a specific profile or individual target. We want a word list of numbers. So we can generate from 00 to 99 using this command sequence. So sequence dash W 0099. And this is the output. Or we can generate from 0 to 100, 0 to 100. Okay. So that's literally what I did so let's see here where was this okay so sequence dash w 0 to 99 and the output will be a word list named numbers now we want to add more numbers so from 9 to from 1 to 9 and we use double arrows because we want to attach these or append these to the word list not replace the current content with the new content we want to use we want to append them so if you want to append them you're going to use double arrows if you want to replace uh, the input or if you want to replace the current contents of the word list with a new input you're going to use the single arrow okay so now we have the word list okay we use ffuf to generate all of the possibilities, all of the uh, URLs, all the contents that return 200 uh, as a status code. So as you can see, I have all of these possibilities, starting from here. So scroll down, and we have all of these. So these numbers represent active content on the website. Okay, now we start with this one, 00. zero and we end up here as you saw earlier so that's how we systematically arrive to this so the note in the note we see add wedding photo examples okay redo the editing on number four remove the slash so this is a directory revealed here we have a directory that has been revealed if we navigate to that directory we can see uh, let me try it myself so we copy that we're going to see uh, a login portal as I remember exactly so that's that's what we get this is a login portal all right so basically here our objective is to get the username and password now again there are multiple methods to try when we uh, are before when we are before a login portal we can try default credentials admin 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 password admin a blank password we can also try sql injection we can try password brute force these are multiple methods you can try if you are in a black box testing but since this is a city of challenge we will skip right away to the correct way to find the credentials so if you right click and view the page source <coughs> part of the yeah we have two scripts here that are deferred from being loaded the dev and the button now enumerating javascripts or enumerating the scripts in the website is part of the website enumeration or the enumeration phase of the penetration testing so it all, it's always a good idea to read the contents of all of the scripts if possible especially the scripts that are deferred or that are part of a web site or a web page like this one so we click on dev and we see this okay so the script here somewhat is handling the login to or the login form so if you scroll down we see the hard-coded credentials in plain text the username and password and it says that if the username is equal to seamdev and the password equal to california after we log in, it's going to lo load this location or load this page. So this is a page that displays a text file. So apparently the dev, this script handles the login. So if we grab these credentials, seem dev, okay, and California, and we log in, we get redirected to this page. 
as expected. Now this page is displayed in the um, if statement here. So if the credentials are matched, we're going to get this page. So there is another set of notes. Stop reusing credentials. That's a hint. So these credentials might be reused on this machine somewhere else. It could be the SSH or could be somewhere else. Check for any vulnerabilities. Stay up to date on patching. Change FTP port to normal port. So this is another hint that an FTP server is running on the machine and it is using a different port than 22. We have to find out. That's when I got back to nmap scan and I did a new nmap scan. This time I used the switch dash p dash to retrieve all of the available open ports. And I saw a new entry in my output 37,370. And it is uh, a port used by the FTP server, specifically VSF TPD. Now you could use this information specifically the version and find a matching exploit but that's not the point of this machine it's just an idea but you can all the time do that in other scenarios not on this machine all right so since we have an ftp server running now it's time to try to log in to that ftp server since we have a hint of credential reuse on reuse on the machine so now this is SSH. Okay, so apparently we have to show you how to do that. So FTP, um, the IP address. This is the machine IP. And the running port is this. The machine is still running. One more time. It looks like I have to restart the machine anyway. Um, if you log into the FTP server, guys, you will see a bunch of files. Okay, now all you have to do is to retrieve these files, okay, using mget. So basically, once you are in, use the credentials. I'm not gonna do that, guys, because it's gonna it's gonna require me to restart the machine all over. Okay, so basically, just log in and use the credentials from here, Seamdev and California, and then download all the files. Among the files, you will see we have these pcap files the first one is seam ftp packet capture uh, for the ftp traffic and packet capture for apparently this is the https and this is http so again for this scenario okay for this scenario we're going to deal with this file so we open this file with wireshark close that one Okay, so for Wireshark, when we open the file with Wireshark, we see this view. We see a display of multiple packets, many packets here, across many protocols. TCP, uh, QUIC, TLS for HTTPS, and of course we see DNS and HTTP. Since we are interested in credential reuse, we are going to look for credentials. So, credentials are only transferred through uh, if we're gonna grab them, they must be transferred in plain text. So we have to look for them in hey HTTP protocol or HTTP packets. Okay, we have limited number of packets. We can work through these packets. So, uh, so the first one, as you can see, it's a GET request, and we have a response with the web page. Again, other GET request to, for a picture, and the response is was not found. Other GET request for the favicon was not found. And then we see a POST request. Now, credentials or plain text sensitive information are transferred through POST requests. So, we're going to explore this. So, 
right click follow tcp stream and this is the post request and the request contains these variables or these parameters uname and psw stands for password the uname is valley dev and the password is this so apparently uh, there might be some sort of login uh, process attempted on, against the server and these credentials were used somehow or it doesn't look like that because the post request happened over slash index html but these credentials were transferred into post request so what we're going to do we're going to use these credentials but now with the ssh so these are the credentials you're going to use for ssh so basically we go back and that's how we got to the ssh server so we log in now to the ssh with the value dev as username and the password as provided in the uh, wireshark and we log in and the wizard we currently have access to is valley dev okay now we start with the enumeration we see what are the active users on the machine that have login shells by using cat slash utc slash password here all right let's scroll down and as you can see we have these users now among these users we can see um this user can log in valid if which is the current active user we have access to you have seem dev which we used to log into the ftp server not interested for privilege escalation we have this one valley valley can log in as you can see and this is the home directory of valley and the shell it can use is bash shell other users cannot log in they are simply service accounts in addition to the root so the next target will be valley we want to escalate from valley dev to valley which is horizontal privilege escalation escalating from an unprivileged user to another non-privileged user but happens to be higher or has higher privileges than the other non-privileged user all right so now as you can see we retrieve the contents of the flag user flag okay that's user flag and now we navigate to the home directory of the active user validev we see these files okay now among these files we have this directory validev it is a directory and we have this directory as well for valley user valley and for the other seam dev we have this file valley authenticator and it happens that this file can be read write execute by valley and the group valley as well so this is an executable file which looks like a file in order to study this file or analyze this file we have to transfer this file to my machine so what i did to transfer this file to my machine i used netcat netcat my ip address my machine ip address and the port i used as a, i used as a listener so as you can see nc lvp 4 5 this is the listener and all the incoming connections to that port i want to redirect them or send them to uh, the output will be a file called valley authenticator so that's what i used okay and here the command i executed from the server as you can see connect to my machine ip on port 545 but sent as an input use this arrow to send an input send the file value authenticator and then it will be co ca it will be caught by my listener and sent to the output as a file called value authenticator so that's the file now the first thing we want to do is to understand the natural to file so we use the command file followed by the file name so the output says that it is an executable file on 64-bit architecture linux so this is a 64-bit file so now here we want to analyze this file now this is not a manual analysis not a reverse engineering don't worry it's not gonna be that difficult it just we have to um, do some of the methods used while statically analyzed a file if you want to if you want more in-depth videos on static and dynamic analysis of binaries or malware analysis you can check out the playlist in the description that i'm going to put after the video 
So the first thing is understanding the nature of the file by using the file command. So it's executable files on 64-bit architecture Linux. All right, the first thing we want is to extract useful information about the file. We can analyze the portable executable header of the file, extract the imports, the DLLs, we can use an analysis tool such as Ghidra or PE Executable Analyst. Uh, but for this time, we can start with simple steps, especially if we don't know yet if, if, it, uh, if it will require this amount of efforts. So we use strings, strings to extract all of the available plain text strings. As you can see, we send them to a file called val uh, value authenticator strings. Let's explore this file. This is the file. We open this file and we see these strings. This is not normal because these strings, they don't make sense. So that's why I suspect that this file is backed using a packer. So if the file is backed with a packer, it should carry the signature of the packer, right? So let's try searching for the word back. And indeed, we find this. This file is packed with the UPX executable packer. Okay. Now, packing executables is a method to protect them from uh, cracking. So basically, you see all of the uh, programs, uh, all of the programs that uh, are cracked and you see crack for this program, crack for this file. All of this happens because the file or the binary is not protected. So packers are used to protect the file. At the same time, it's used by malware developers to obfuscate the strings, as we see here, and to obfuscate the nature of the file to evade static analysis. So before dealing, before um, doing anything else, we have to first to unpack the file. To unpack the file, we have to use the UPX executable packer itself. Okay, it's the GUI program, or on Linux, we can use this command. If you're using Cal Linux, we can use UPX D, right, to depack a file. So basically, we, depack, we use this command to extract the unpacked version of this executable binary. As you can see, unpacked one file. Now, if we use strings on this file one more time, the output will be different. So we go back. And this time strings on this file and I store the output on a different file called val value authenticator strings v2. If you go to v2 now, we see a file. Yeah, we still have some strings that are gibberish, but again, we have these. You see, we start to see some strings that do make sense for the human I. And we see this. Look, welcome to Valley Incorporation Authenticator. What's your username? What's your password authenticated? <laughs> right now, and we have we happen to see these two. Apparently, they look like hashes. So, if we take the first one as the username and the second one as the password, and we hit to crack station, that's the first one. That's the other one. The first one, luckily for us, has been uh, a match has been found. Liberty one two three supposed to be a password, and the second one, a match for it has been found, which is Valley. Now Valley happens to be a username we that that, that that's on our target list for a privileged escalation. So uh, immediately we go back to SSH and we sue or we change the user to Valley. And we use the password we found earlier, liberty123, and we escalate successfully to Valley. Now we are the user Valley. Now it's time to escalate to what? To the root. So make a note that make a note of this of this. The idea of Valley and it's part of a group called Valley and Valley Admin. Take a note of this, it's gonna come handy later. Alright, so we see you to the home directory of Valley and we see nothing of importance. Okay, now the target here is to escalate from valley to root. So if you want an automatic method for Linux privilege escalation, you can use the automated methods.
Okay, so here also I listed them in minus file. If we click, if we go to automate, automated methods, we can use Limpies. We can upload Limpies to the machine and check the output. We can also try Linux enumerator, Linux exploit suggester, smart enumeration. There are many scripts for automated privileged escalation on Linux. But for this machine, if we use some common sense on Linux privilege escalation, it's very obvious that we need to check the cron tab. If we check the cron tab, we see this script. It's Python script, right? It's being run by root, as you can see, every single minute. Now, since the script is being run as root, it is worth taking a look at its contents. Why? Because every script that is running as root and periodically or part of a cron job, if we can manipulate the script to run our own code, we can get access as root. That's why. So now we go to photos and we list the contents of this directory. We see the script. We check the permissions of the script directory. As you can see, only root can read and write and modify on the directory. That's expected. We check this permissions on the photos encrypt. We see only root can execute this or modify on it. If we check the contents of the photo encrypt, as you can see, it takes an input and encrypts the photo as base64. Base64, so it uses the base64 functionality. Okay. Now, if you want to, if you want to um, manipulate the workings of this script, we have to check what it is doing. So it is using a couple functionalities of Python. Among them is the base64. So base64 is a library in Python, okay, and it can be found under user library Python3, depending on the Python version you have on your machine. So what I did. In order to manipulate this script, I have to find some method to manipulate its functionality, as I said earlier. So we try with base64. What if we manipulate or try to modify the base64 library itself, the file that it is using, right? So this script, as you can see, imports base64. If we locate the file, uh, the, the library file, and we change its workings, okay? the whole script will change. And we've done some similar work previously on Python by hijacking Python libraries. Simply hijacking Python library is hijacking or changing or modifying the corresponding library file. So the library file for base64 is located under user lib python3 as all other libraries. Okay, so what I did, I listed the contents of all the libraries and I grip base64. That's the base64 library file responsible for this module okay now we check the permissions on this file because we want to manipulate this file or modif modify this file so we see the contents the root is the owner and valley admin can modify on this file now valley admin group as you can see if we display the groups and group and uh, grip valley we see the valley admin group contains the value user as uh, an active user part of it. Value user is our active user right now, which means value as a user can modify on page 64. Good news. So what you have to do, we have to change or use, change the script, okay, or modify on it. We can add one single line to escalate the privileges. So one simple way to escalate the privileges is to change the permissions on the bash shell attach the sweet bit set we have done multiple scenarios on this so a single command written on this file will turn the tables and be able to will enable us to escalate to root so the next step now is to as you can see we modify the file base64 so let me show you the contents of this file the connection is closed let's try to connect again Okay, the machine doesn't respond for some reason. So what you have to do here, if we 
use nano on this file you add this line first os.system okay and the command will be chmod u plus s bin cache if you add this line directly below the imports so let's uh, let's see I, I hope i can connect the machine but it doesn't work anyway so we add this line to this file and we leave it wait for one minute and then we see that the bin bash has the suit bit set if you execute bash dash p we see that we have access now to the user root so that's how it works guys and before we wrap up uh, the nodes here are part of the channel membership the second tier now some of the nodes are stored online as you can see here so every change i do in the nodes can be found online on this url now if you want to get access to the notes again you have to subscribe to the channel membership don't forget that the notes part of them is online can be found here once you are subscribed and some of them are <coughs> stored as pdf because they contain copyrights you can find them here under this link of course uh, the these links will be available after you subscribe to the channel membership so that's what that was it guys i hope you find that helpful and i'm gonna see you later